Every time I see you, I just feel like it's another year that I have not been in Ireland. That's right. I know. Oh, that's, that's outrageous. Great. I love Ireland. Dude. They have really great audiences. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, the show was great. Almost yeah, Richard sure. Pryor, Terrace, <laughs> Terrace Theater in California in 1978. Oh, no, favorite. nothing's that good. I'm just saying. Nothing's you know, that I just that thought you flow, you flow, though. There was no kind of yeah. fat on it. I just great, thought it was a lovely it? rhythm to it. Thank and, you, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Don't, don't, no, nothing know. gets compared to prior. I know. Well, that's. Uh, I was watching it again last night just because I was thinking about it. And it's just, you know. uh, it's just called Live in Concert from 1978. It's just the most perfect 70 minutes of stand-up. I think you've never seen my concert. You ever stand-up? talking about that. Have you got a stand-up? Yeah. What's that? Did you do a stand-up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. no. Concert films. That no. That got released. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think we would have heard by now. <laughs> but Razor Rock... Sequels, especially in animation, are, are very rarely equals, but I think this one's actually better than the first movie, and I don't know whether that surprised you guys, because it is rule of thumb that it's just slightly less, but still fun, but this seems a better movie. Oh, well, that's good. Um, well, I feel like we didn't want to really do it unless we thought we could do something better, and I think uh, the process is so strange, really, uh, for an actor, that you learn the first time, and I think you can't help but have a better feeling for it the I second time. I think we time. all learn. Yeah. The first time. Yeah. The first time you're so, I mean, especially animated movies are so expensive and so, you know, take so much that you're, you're so trying not to mess up. So that, that first movie, a lot of times, is really safe. And yeah, <laughs> I guess so. But it's also the process, too. Like, yeah. you, you just don't, you haven't seen it. So you don't ever see the animation until it's all finished. So. I, I thought Shrek 2 was better than Shrek 1. Mm. By, like, a lot. Mm. It just said more. Um, jokes in it yeah and so you'd learn as you go along and, and having seen the finished product I think it was helpful in the second one because then we, I could like visualize what it was going to look like a little bit and well, one of the core things of, of the movie and, and all good animation movies have certain life lessons and, mm-hmm. and Alex gets back to Africa and discovers he's got parents there and, mm-hmm. and his father Zuba is, is none too impressed when he realizes his, his son has got jazz hands and is a right. dancer and and that sort of idea that, that you know this sort of you know he's not a natural line because he has this sort of side to him. Yes. I don't know whether showbiz folk have that too in a way that you're kind of you've got a life that you are a performer and that you've got a certain degree of entertainment in your blood and and yet you know of course your 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 father your brother your mother or whatever it might be. I don't know if that ever feel if that infringes on you two guys whether you sometimes feel there's a divide that you really kind of like are you funny twenty four hours a day? I, I can't imagine you you would want to be funny twenty four hours a day, but there would be that maybe pressure to be. Ben's got more pressure to be funny no, 24 hours a day. Can't you see how did. funny I'm being right now? <laughs> I saved it all for this five minutes. Um, actually, I've been funny for the other 23 hours and 55 minutes. I decided to take a break right now. Uh, no, you know, my family is all actors. So in terms of that, I, it's sort of like that's just that's it. But we don't go around trying to entertain each other. I feel like a family is you just... You didn't do a, monologues at... We did, sort of, actually. We did... Do, <laughs> Thanksgiving. You know, and honestly, <laughs> we did for, like, I would do... It's sort of embarrassing to say, but, like, our, for fun, sometimes we would play around and do, like, improvs and funny character wow. games. But not, like, trying to... Like, just out of... I don't know what. Just, like, naturally, just sort of, like, my sister, my dad, and I, and just... He's just, like, a playful guy, so... But it's we- that's weird when you talk about it out of context. But it was not anything that was sort of like forced. So this, this whole was- thing was destined. Yeah, <laughs> we're just but then like acting. It had to happen. Yeah, it had to happen. It was, that was the religion in our household. <laughs> it was humor. But continuing the, the kind of the movie theme, the idea that that you know uh, your parentage, like when you talk about your father, like the the, the surprisingly yeah. foul mouthed. If anyone's seen Heartbreak Kid, mm-hmm. eighty one years old now, kind of comic serving. legend. <laughs> And, uh, and and obviously, I mean, that was part of your life and, and part of your kind of um, mm-hmm. growing up. But I'm thinking for you, Chris, like, I know your father just about saw you starting. You got the cameo in Beverly Hills uh, Cop and, and, and you just started working in movies and you've done your stand-up. This is just following on through the movie. Is there somebody in a way that you're kind of proving all this motivation to be who you are and to be successful? I don't know whether it goes right down to the old thing of, of your parents being you want to prove to mm-hmm. them or whether it's just it's beyond that. It's just something that is in you that you just wanted to be this successful and, and be this guy that you are. Is that deep enough? Yeah, sure. Uh, so what's the question? Who I'm just wondering what the motivation is, whether yourself it's yourself to. What's it about? Who is it that you're trying to live up to in your head? Let me explain something to you. <laughs> in nineteen Why is it never enough, Chris? Well and if if you would have came up to me in nineteen ninety ninety and offered me a job making Thirty thousand dollars a year. Was it ninety? Okay, maybe maybe eighty-seven. Thirty thousand dollars a year. 
I would have never told a joke in my life. Wow. That's like a let's make a deal sort of proposition. Yeah, like, it's good yeah. you didn't I would have never, ever thought about telling a joke. I would have considered myself rich and doing better than half my neighborhood. Okay, but you were doing comedy in 1990, though. Yeah, okay, I said I brought it back to 87. Okay. okay. But you'd already been doing stand-up. There must have been a motivation. But you know what? Even in 90, if you'd have offered me $70,000. So it's all I'd about money, quit. is what you're saying. <laughs> it's all about I'm just, just saying, I have a... I have a Living in a studio is always in the back of my head. Right, right. I know. <laughs> I have been trying to prove it to my cleaning my up father. this hotel is always <laughs> lurking. <laughs> yeah. It's always like <laughs> chambermaid, chambermaid. It's always kind of like because I've been told I'm nearly out of time. Uh, we mentioned before I that you, nothing. you played. It. <laughs> I like that chambermaid. That chambermaid. <laughs> You played the Olympia in Dublin in, in September and a wonderful show. And, and okay. as I said, almost as, as good in my mind as the, the Richard Pryor of 78. No we one's won't, as good as Pryor. No one's but, al- no, not even almost. That's too much. But it gives me an excuse to talk about Ireland. I know you were saying last time I spoke yeah. to you recently, you haven't been there for about it's 10 been, years. Yeah, it's been a while. And you took me. somebody's wing mirror off. That was your. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah, that's my claim to fame, driving on the wrong but side. You, I don't know if you had a little bit of time in Ireland, Chris, to do anything at all besides uh, do I the just show. just did and, the shows. You know, I went to a pub and drank. And I'm not really a big drinker, but if you're in yes. Ireland, you gotta drink. Yeah. True. What are you What are you doing in Ireland yeah. for? Um, you gotta smoke weed in Amsterdam, right? <laughs> you have to. Sure. It's the law. It's the law. Yeah. Um. So I, yeah, I went to a pub. Drink. That's about the extent of our culture, anyway. I think you got just about what <laughs> we have to offer. So. That and James Joyce. There you go. Good Combination. Life. You have yeah. to make a choice. Most of us go for the beer. Some people go for James Joyce. Yeah, yeah. Rock and roll. I think I'm giving him the friendly finger. Nice to talk to you.